Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 80 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Mike, Spearhead Sundays, yeah, shut the fuck up, good one, mate, you made the same joke that every other cunt on, on the fucking internet has made. No, Sundays, more like Sundays, because, you know, it only comes out Sundays. Do you know how little fucking podcasts I've missed, huh, you ungrateful fucks? I hardly miss any of them now. I, ne- I, you know what? I never was really that infrequent with them. But you guys are just like, <laughs> he only puts them out some days. It's free. You're not paying for it. <laughs> what do you want, huh? You want you want you want me to fucking kill myself over this hour long unplanned ramble? Is it really that important to your life? Is it? This podcast that you know, it didn't come out one day. I'm going to complain. The thing that I don't pay for didn't come out on time. <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude. Because you didn't pay for it. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I do apologize, guys. I'm just kidding. It, it was it was my bad. I did fuck up um, with... Uh, I, I just didn't, fi- I didn't find the time. Because um, I was so focused last week on... Uh, on the crowdfund and, and making sure that I did the crowdfund and, and I, you know, I, last week I put out three videos. I had one on my main channel, then I had the crowdfund update, then I had the one on the second channel and I was, you know, doing all my Snapchat and I had gigs and, and doing all the promo. I had a few podcast interviews as well. It just, time just got away from me and I, I realized uh, basically on Sunday, oh, fuck, I didn't make time to record the podcast and then... I was like, I could do it on Sunday and put it up late that Sunday, but I was just really fucking tired, and I tried recording it, and then I was just like, you know what, this is shit. I would rather just not put one out than put out a shitty one. So I do apologize for not putting out a podcast, but uh, I'm back on track now, guys. Um, now that the crowdfund's over and it, it's all really successful, um, yeah, I'm back back on track with the podcast, and uh, hopefully I won't be missing any more for a really long time. Uh, now that we're on 80, because fuck, we're on the home stretch now, moving towards episode 100 which, man, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for episode 100. It's, I'm definitely going to do a live thing, but I'm not too sure. If you have any suggestions of what you would like to see or hear, obviously not see, uh, what you would like to hear for episode 100, or if you have any fucking suggestions, let me know. Any challenges or anything like that, or guests you would like on episode 100, let me know. Um, before we get into the rest of the podcast, I would just like to say really quickly, I'm not going to harp on like I have been for the last 30 days, but yes, the crowdfund is over. Uh, it was successful. We're, we raised $47,000, um, which is phenomenal. And I'm very, very grateful to the two and a half thousand people who pledged, um, and, uh, to everybody who is planning on getting the special when it does come out. So, um, <clears throat> what's happening now is basically, I'm just going to shut the fuck up about it. I'm not going to talk about it any, anymore. Um, and just really put my head down and get to work. I've been performing as much as possible. Um, and, uh, oh, fuck it. I'll just tell you New Zealand. All you guys keep asking me, well, when are you coming to New Zealand, man? Hang on. Let me do my, let me do my terrible accent. Oi, bro. When are you coming to New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, New Zealand, I am announcing my New Zealand tour uh, next week. So the tickets are going to go on pre-sale on Tuesday, I believe, as long as the people that I'm booking the tour with do their side of the job on time. It should all be on ready for pre-sale on Tuesday and then general public sale on Thursday. So if you want to get access to the pre-sale, I do all of that through my gig list, loosespheres.com slash gig list. Type that into your phone or your computer and just put... Uh, Put New Zealand in your city and your email in there and you will get an email with a password to get tickets before anybody else. Now, it's my first time that I'm coming to New Zealand, so I'm doing quite small venues uh, because I don't, I I feel like I don't really know how many people are going to turn up, but um, so many people keep telling me to go there uh, all the time. So I don't know. I'm hoping that they'll sell out, but it is my first time in the country, so uh, I'm not too sure how it will go, but I would love to fucking see you there because... It's going to be a great opportunity for me to perform before the special. So I can guarantee you a fucking ripper show because that will be happening in October is when I'm going to New Zealand. And then the the special recording happens in November. So if you come to the New Zealand show, you're going to catch a fucking, 
You're going to catch me in my peak form, basically, which is what I've been training up to. So, uh, yeah, I would love to see you in New Zealand. Loosespheres.com slash gigglist to get into the pre-sale. And I will talk about it more next week when uh, it all is on sale. All right. So let's get into this week. Uh, what what happened in the last two weeks? Uh, all the crowdfund shit. That's boring. You've heard it all. It was successful. Thank you very much. Now, I wanted to uh, thank uh, the person who fucking saved me. Hours and hours of tedious work. Do you guys remember a couple of podcasts ago, I was trying to... I had all of this information from my mailing list that I fucked up on my website. So all of the data, all of people's emails and cities were getting emailed to me, but not saved with my mailing list service. So I had literally about 2,000 individual people that I had to import manually. I had to copy and paste the name and then the city and then the email address into my mailing list software. And that was one person, one person, three copy and paste. And it was taking me fucking forever. Like if I was doing that on my own, it no shit would have taken me three days. And I was considering paying somebody. I was, I was like trying to figure out how I could do this. Uh, and one person suggested this because it was like tedious data entry, right? I just wanted to pay somebody else to do it. And one person suggested that I... Sorry, I'm just adjusting myself here. One person suggested this website. Um, what was it called? Fuck, let me have a look. Um, give me a second, I'll come back. This is not an ad, by the way. I just want to find out this website because it was fucking awesome. All right, I'm back. It was called Upwork. Uh, somebody s- suggested the, this website called Upwork, which is basically like Tinder, but for terrible jobs that nobody wants to do. So, you know, it's kind of like Tinder. There's a whole bunch of people there that nobody wants to do. <laughs> so you try and find somebody who does. So I had a terrible fucking job that nobody wanted to do. Uh, and I put it on Upwork. So basically, you just describe your job. Uh, and I was like, hey, I have 2,000 single entry pieces of data that I need to put into uh, a Word doc, uh, a, a fucking some kind of document, I forget what it is already, right? (laughs) Because I'm an idiot, uh, who can do this for me. And uh, I I put up, because I thought it would take fucking ages, I put up uh, $200. I'm like, I'll pay $200 because I think it's going to take like three days. And literally within seconds of me putting that on the website, I was inundated with, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And that's when I I noticed, uh, that's when I realized, okay, I have uh, clearly way highballed myself here. <laughs> I'm ripping myself off here because if you put up a if you put it up for a reasonable price, you would think that a few people will be like, nah, it's not worth it to me. Too much effort. But I put up 200 bucks. So all of these people are like, I can do it. Let me do it. So I was like, okay, these kinds probably have a program that does it for them. I immediately realized they figured that out. Um, <clears throat> and so this one guy gets to me from Ivan. His name was he, not from Ivan. His name was Ivan. And he was, he lived in like Romania or some weird country. And he was like, Hey man, I can do this. So I was like, all right, cool. Good on you, Ivan. Go for it. And no joke about an hour later, he goes, all done. <laughs> so it probably took him fucking three minutes. He probably put it into a program. The program did it for him. And then he got 200 bucks. I'm not mad about it because to me it was worth that. Cause then I can send an email to everybody about my fucking New Zealand tour and all that shit. But, um, it was just funny to me that, that I could do that. And, and this Upwork thing, like you can do all of this kind of shit, all this data entry, all of these menial, boring fucking tasks that nobody wants to do. Like, it, the power of the internet, man. Like, I was literally exploiting the third world from the comfort of my own home. I mean, fuck it. I might put up a, an, another order to get some 12-year-old to make me some Nike shoes. <laughs> Maybe I can get that done. Uh, speaking of shoes, actually, I've been trying to figure out what kind of shoes I'm going to wear for the special. And I've found the shoes that I want to wear. But they came out in uh, 2015. And they are sold out everywhere. I need a pair a size 13. Um, I know this sounds very desperate and pathetic. But I need this pair of shoes. And if anyone is listening who knows shoes, or you have these shoes, what they are, I'm I'm just going to put it out there. If you have these shoes, I will buy them from you if you're international, whatever. I'm looking for a pair of size US 13, which is a UK 12, or a Europe 47, or 47 and a half, I believe, uh, of Nike Air Max 90 BR Racer Blue, all right? 
Nike Air Max 90 BR Racer Blue. That's what I need. They are blue all over. They're the fucking same color blue as the blue roses on my t-shirt. If you have this shoe in size 13, or if you know a friend who has this shoe in size 13, please get back to me. I will buy that fucking shoe. I'll pay for shipping. I'll do whatever it takes. I don't mind if it's used, just as long as it's in good condition, because we are going to be, I'm going to be wearing them while it's filmed. Um, please do get back to me, because... Holy fuck, I've had the biggest trouble finding that shoe. Normally I'm pretty good with shoes, all right? Let me let me get into I'm very particular with my shoe. When I'm writing a show, generally the first thing that happens is I decide on the title. And the title decides the theme and the feel of the show. And the second thing that I do, by the way, this is before writing any jokes, I decide the outfit that I'm going to wear. <laughs> and the most important part of the outfit is the fucking shoes. You guys know me. I wear Air Max 90s. I make them as bright as fucking possible because I normally wear all black and I think all black with really bright shoes stands out and it makes people have really strong opinions, all right? Whether people either love them or they fucking hate them. Either way, you have a very strong opinion about my outfit. <laughs> and that's what I'm going for, okay? So I decided on these shoes and I was like, all right, cool. Uh, they came out. Actually, what's interesting is they are the same kind of shoe that I wore on Try and Stop Me. I wore the the extremely bright highlighter yellow. They're the same model. Came out at the same time. The only difference is they're they're a really nice blue, same color as as the the whole theme with the blue roses that we're going for, which is why I want them. Um, <clears throat> so I'm like, cool. These are the shoes that I want. Time to track them down. No joke, early this week on Monday, I spent five hours on Google trying to find these shoes. I went to eBay. I went to page five of Google. I even tried Bing, ladies and gentlemen. This is how desperate I am for these fucking shoes. And uh, I could find them in size 12, size 14, size 11, all these different kind of sizes, but I cannot find a size 13, which is why I'm asking you guys for help. Um, so what I, what I did was, uh, I looked online, couldn't find them anywhere, searched for five hours. I was looking at the shoe stores in UK. Actually, I found a pair of them in, where was it? It was, oh, I can't remember. Oh, Bulgaria. I found, no, no joke. I found it in, I found it in a size UK 12 in Bulgaria, but because of Bulgaria's laws, they don't ship outside of Bulgaria. So... <laughs> the only pair of shoes. I'm, I'm going to have to take a fucking flight to Bulgaria, guys. I don't know what kind of country that is, but I'm coming back with my shoes. All right, so I'm not, not actually doing that. They're not that important. But if you have them, please let me know. Anyway, so I finally figure out uh, that no online store has them. And then I saw an ad from Culture Kings. And they were like, we have this shoe. And I was like, I don't want to give you money. <laughs> I don't want to fund this operation because that's how it fucking works with their marketing and their culture kings and their 10,000 Vietnamese dudes who think they're black, all right, that work there and, 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 the, and the islanders who, who, who are more black than the Vietnamese dudes, but still not fucking black. <laughs> they're all there. And, and I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to find that, that operation. I'm like, you're not American. All right. Stop trying to be American. You're, you're an Australian business that is just trying to capitalize off of our obsession with American culture. And it fucking works. Cause every time I go past that store, they're playing all of this, um, all of these American trash rap songs that are just like, not the good, not like Kendrick Lamar, like the trash party rap about, Hey, I took Somali. Yeah. And it's like, dude, we don't say Molly here. You, like, Culture Kings is the reason why fucking 16-year-old kids are walking around in snapback saying, Oh, have you got any fucking Molly, brah? It's like, dude, it's ecstasy here, all right? It's ecstasy and ketamine. You take some ketty, you go spaghetti, all right? <laughs> That's what it is here. Stop trying to pretend to be American. Anyway, I was desperate, guys. I was very desperate. I, I need you to understand that I was I was on page five of Google trying to buy shoes from Bulgaria. I was down to my last my last resolve, and I'm not proud of this. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to Culture Kings. I went on their website, and they had the shoe, but they only had it in a size 12. I was like, fuck. And then I came back to it the next day, and it had sold out online because I was going to try. I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just buy it in a size 12. Maybe I could wear it. Right? Maybe I could just loosen the, 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 the laces and, I, and it could be kind of bearable. We'll see. I would thought I was going to try it on, but then it was sold out. But then Culture Kings was like, hey, 
our online warehouse stock is actually different from our in-store stock. I was like, oh shit. And then I had a look at all their stores. They had Sydney, Perth, Brisbane, whatever. And Melbourne, they were like, we have a pair in size 8 and size 13. I was like, well, fucking hell. I'm going in. I'm going into Culture King. So I decided to go the next morning. So I was preparing for it. I put on, uh, I put on a snapback. I put on those uh, fucking shitty sweatpants where the, where the crotch goes all the way down to your knees. And then the, the bottom of them come halfway up your calf. And then they've got like a little cuff on there. You know? I, I put on my ankle socks and my terrible fucking Adidas shoes that aren't Yeezys, but they kind of look like it. I don't know how the fuck they get away with that without Kanye going, hey, yeah, I know you're paying me to make shoes, but you're also fucking copying my design. Can you please not? <laughs> you know, those fucking shoes. Anyway, <clears throat> so they open at 10. So I woke up in the morning and I was like, I'm going to be there as soon as Culture Kings open because I'm not letting any other cunt get these fucking shoes. So I go to get up at nine. I get on the train because I... Because I can't afford a car. <laughs> and then I go into the fucking city. And I get to Culture Kings. Bam! Right when they open. Walk into the place. They're playing this cancer music. And I, I, I go through. I start looking for the shoe section. I find one shoe section. They're not there. I'm like, that's alright. It's probably upstairs. I go upstairs. Past the DJ who was just fucking literally just practicing. Cutting and mixing. He doesn't give a fuck. There's no customers in there. So it's just it just sounds like... The music playing, so I was like, dun, 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 dun. and then he starts scratching the record, so it just sounds like, dun, 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 dun. and it's like, dude, don't, please don't do that, it fucking sucks. <laughs> anyway, so I go upstairs, uh, and there's another shoe joint, and I look, and I can't find him, <clears throat> so I'm like, fuck, and then I talk to the guy, and I'm like, hey man, showed him my phone, and I was like, I need these shoes. And it says, I showed him a picture of the Culture Kings website. And it says here that you have it in a size 13. And he goes, yeah, bro, let me have a look. Hey, uh, sometimes the website is a little bit behind, but uh, I'll have a look for the shoe, bro. And then he goes, and you know what he does? Does he go out the back? Does he ask his manager? No. You know what he does? He looks at the shells that I just looked at. And then he comes back to me and he goes, no, nah, bro, we don't have them. And I looked him in the face and I said... Get in the back, cunt. Get in the back and look for those fucking shoes. <laughs> so he goes around the back and then he comes back 10 minutes later. He goes, hey, bro, we don't have them. And I was like, oh, fucking Culture Kings. I traveled an hour from my house into the city to go to Culture Kings as soon as it opened and they didn't have the fucking shoe. Anyway, so I look it up and it goes, oh, Perth probably has a shoe. No, Sydney. That's what it was. It was Sydney on the website. I had a shoe. So I, I leave Culture Kings fuming, enraged, wasted it, wasted my whole fucking day, all right? Because I know it only took an hour out of my day, but I was angry for the rest of the day, so that fucking counts. <laughs> I was too angry to do anything. So I leave one Culture Kings, I get out my phone, and I give an interstate call to the Culture Kings in Sydney, which is just the most embarrassing the lowest point in my life, ladies and gentlemen, is when I walked out of a Culture Kings and called another. I'm on the phone. This guy was actually very, very nice. He answered the phone. Again, another Maori dude. I don't have anything against Maoris. I just think it's hilarious that they seem to exclusively hire Maori dudes or um, like half Asian women that act like they're African-American when they live in Australia and they've never been there. I don't know. It's just, it's just funny to me. You will never see a white dude working in Culture Kings. It's fucking hilarious. Um, anyway, so I'm on the phone with this, I, this guy goes, Hey, bro, Culture Kings, Sydney. I'm like, dude, didn't I just talk to you in Culture Kings, Melbourne? <laughs> it's the same dude, all right? Uh, and I'm like, hey, man. Um, so it says on the website that uh, you have a size 13 of these Ultra BR Racer Blue shoes. I need them. Do you have them? And he goes, hey, give me a second, bro. I'm just going to go check out the back. And then he puts the phone down and I can hear the DJ also practicing. And it's like, fucking hell, this cunt's practicing too with his shitty fucking DJ skills. Yeah, that's all you know you're a shitty DJ when you're working 10 a.m. at fucking Culture King Sydney for three hours instead of at a nightclub. Oh, that'd suck. <clears throat> all right. 
That'd be like, the, the, you're not a DJ if you work at Cold Chickens, right? That'd be like a dude who works at Macca's calling himself a fucking chef. Anyway, so I'm on the phone listening to this awful over-the-phone DJ remixing. And then it's like five minutes later, he comes back and he goes, Hey, bro, the website's usually pretty fucking slow, eh? Hey? We don't have those shoes. But, and I was like, fuck. And then I go, well, can, does it say that anywhere else might have them? And he goes, I was just about to say that, bro. It looks like Culture Kings Perth has them. And I was like, oh, sick. Culture Kings Perth have these fucking shoes. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it gets worse. I go, thank you very much, mate. He goes, no worries, bro. Good luck. And he hangs up the phone. I'm like, man, what a good dude. What a nice person. And then I had to call another Culture Kings, didn't I? All right. So I was, you know, actually, I didn't call them straight away because I was that mad. I was like, I was just fuming. I, I knew that if I got on the phone to Culture Kings Perth, I would he would have answered the phone and I would have just fucking, give me my fucking shoe. I would have just lost it. So I, I took a bit to cool down. I went to a comic shop, had a, had a peruse, had a look around. I got the, uh, I got uh, volume six of uh, Brian Azzarello's Wonder Woman, which by the way is a wonderful run. I highly recommend it. I also got, what else did I got? I got uh, volume one of uh, Grant Morrison's Action Comics, Superman. Uh, and then I got volume two of, uh, The Walking Dead. Um, I didn't spend that much money. The, the action comics in The Walking Dead were of half price for some reason. So I only, I walked out of there spending like 70 bucks and I got fucking three trays, which is phenomenal. <clears throat> um, but enough about my savvy comic book purchases. <laughs> we're trying to track down a shoe, right? So then after like, after like an hour and a half of comic looking at and nerding out, I was, I was finally calm enough to give fucking Culture Kings Perth a call, and I have never had a more frustrating fucking conversation in my life, because there's something about the people of Perth, alright, I don't hate you, don't, 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 if you're from Perth, I love you, alright, Perth is one of my favourite places to go because of the people, but it's also the most frustrating place in the world, also because of the people. <laughs> Every time I land in Perth, I have problems like immediately. I've talked, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell them again. You've all heard my fucking problems every time I land in Perth. The shows are always amazing, but getting the show happening is always fucking horrendous. And so I call Culture Kings Perth. And again, the same guy answers the phone. Hello, Culture Kings Perth. How can I help you, bro? <laughs> and I was like, dude, uh, at least they're, at least they're fucking on point. They only they're only hiring Maori dudes and half Asian girls in even in Culture Kings Perth, right? I imagine the hiring in Culture Kings New Zealand is the easiest shit ever. Uh, or maybe it's reverse. Maybe they only hire white dudes in Culture Kings New Zealand. If anyone's from New Zealand and they've been to Culture Kings, do they exclusively hire Maori dudes or is it all white people? I'd be interesting to, to <laughs> I'd be interested to see the difference, all right? Anyway, so I get on the phone to this cunt from Perth and Culture Kings and I'm like hey man I ain't and I'm looking at this on my phone right I ain't, I've been looking at this fucking shoe for five hours I know what I'm talking about hello I would like the the Nike Air Max 90 Ultra BR in racer blue size US 13 please and then he goes oh bro that's a women's shoe and I said no it's not it is a man's shoe. And he goes, I don't know, bro, I'm pretty sure that's a woman's shoe. I said, it's a man's shoe! I've been looking at this fucking thing for five hours yesterday. I've called two Culture Kings and I've been to one. It's a man's shoe. Fucking check the back, you dog. And he goes, I don't know, bro, I'm pretty sure that's a woman's shoe, but I'll have a look in the back for you. And then he goes out the back. And I am just, I am catatonic. At this, at this point, I'm just fucking raging. I'm at the train station, being like, fucking idiot, women's shoe. You know, fucking women's shoe, it's a man's shoe. I've been looking at it all day. I know everything about this fucking shoe. I even know the fucking model number of this fucking shoe. And then he comes back after like five minutes. He goes, I just checked out the back, bro. Didn't find it, eh? And I just didn't believe him. And I still don't believe him. Or, or at the very least, I don't trust him. Okay, because if he looked out, because 100% he did not believe me when I told him that it was a man's shoe. I literally had to say, no man, I'm looking at the shoe on your website. It is in the men's section. Oh, that's right. He goes, no, it's a woman's shoe, bro. And I'm like, uh, no, it's a man's shoe. He goes, what size do you want? 
And I was like, I need it in size 13. He goes, women's shoes don't come in size 13, bro. It's a man's shoe. Anyway, sorry if I'm blowing your ears out, guys. I'm just reliving my rage. So the cunt fucking goes in and he he checks for, for not long enough to make me feel comfortable. What I reckon he did was he put the phone down and he thinks that I'm lying. He goes, oh, what an idiot. I'm just going to sit here and stand here and then not check out the back and come back later and tell him that I don't have it because I know that I'm right, even though I'm wrong. Because that's what I would do. <laughs> that's what I used to do when I was working on the phones in customer service. People would call up uh, and they would just be wrong. And then I would be like, let me just check that out with my manager. And I just put the phone down and then go on, go on my mobile check Facebook and then come back and be like, yeah, just spoke to my manager. He says, you're an idiot. See you later, mate. But the problem is I'm right. You know what? Thinking back on how many times I did that to people, I, I bet there was many times where I was wrong and I just did the same thing that this fucking dude from Culture Kings did to me. Anyway, or at least I think he did this to me. So he, he checked or he said that he checked and he's like, we don't have it. So I, was, I just gave up on the shoe. I got desperate, posted about it on Twitter talking about it in the podcast. <clears throat> you know what, actually, if anyone's from Perth, can you go to the Culture Kings for me? I know this is like, this is a big ask, all right? This is, a even, this is even a bigger ask than my crowdfund, really, of you guys. Can one of you go to Culture Kings and just check if they have that shoe in Perth in size 13? Um, and if they have it, uh, buy it and I'll pay you for it and I'll give you a t-shirt and I'll pay you a bit of money. All right. If they have it le and let me know if they don't have it, if you go there and you don't uh, you, just play, I don't know. I, I was, I feel guilty asking for it cause it, it just ruined my week. But I, you know, I went to, I, I overdosed on culture Kings guys. Really? Maybe it's not that bad. I did OD on it, <laughs> but I'm just looking for this shoe. So if anybody has a shoe or they know somebody who's, who has a shoe, let me know because I've gone through hell to get it and it would suck if I couldn't have it for my special. But um, let's stop talking about the shoe and the, and the special. What else happened to me this week? Um, <clears throat> oh, you know all the shit that I broke last week? Well, I've got some good news, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, fixed my gaming headphones. What I did is, uh, I got, my dad's a carpenter, so I got his, like, builder's hectic glue, and, uh, I glued the, because what happened is my, my girlfriend stepped on it, and then it snapped off at the rotating part, so it still goes back in, but, ne but it just doesn't rotate because whatever rotating piece was holding it together was broken. So I just filled the, the, the place with glue, stuck the rotating place back in, and then wrapped it up in electrical builder's tape. Uh, and now it's as good as new. It just doesn't rotate, which doesn't really matter because you don't need it to. You know, it's one of those, those, those things that they can, it can come off your ear by turning it. And I never use that shit. I would just take the whole headset off. So... Um, my gaming headphones have survived. I didn't have to replace them, which is good. Uh, and my wireless microphone actually was not broken. Thank fuck, because this thing costs like $400 and I'm just not in a position to replace it at the moment. Um, what happened was, because I, because I had the mic, how, how, it's a, like a wireless microphone. You put it in your back pocket, right? And I put it in my back pocket and then I sat on it. And what happened was... I actually um, unplugged the microphone, so that's why it wasn't working. Um, even though it said that it was on and it said it was working, it wasn't actually plugged in properly when I sat down on it, which is weird because it has this fucking weird screw system to make sure that it does stay in. But I think that just from my years of using this thing, or well, I think I've had it for like a year, it must have just slowly become uh, rotated, the, the, to, the loosen the loosening direction way. I don't know if there's a word for that. If there's a word for loosening something when you <laughs> unscrewed, you fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> unscrewed. You're a dumb cunt, man. Yeah. It got unscrewed. Fucking hell. That's going to be memed about in the podcast group. Oh man. I unscrewed it just over, over like, you know, days and days and months of using it ever so slightly so that I guess when I sat on it, that was the final straw and it moved out of its plug position just a little bit to it not to be plugged in. So I figured that out, screwed it back in and it works perfect. As you saw in the Lure review, that was uh, me using my lapel mic after I fixed it. So there we go. Uh, also my Adobe was working. Um, well, I, I did fix that. I had to tell you that I fixed that. So, and also my, uh, my cords came, my HDMI cords came for the, uh, 
external monitor and they work really, really well. They are almost too short, but I managed to figure it out and now it's just quite tight when I plug it in. So everything's, everything's coming up Louie, huh? Crowdfund went well, headphones went well, couldn't find my fucking shoes! But, um, I don't know, hopefully you guys will be able to help me out, let me know. And yeah, so, uh, that brings us to something that I'm, uh, excited and terrified about. Yeah? Because, um, I need to go to gym. Because what I want is I want to look good for the special. I think that I want to weigh 80 kilos for the special. Um, maybe 85, but I feel like that might be too heavy. I don't want, I don't want to not look like myself. I, like, I don't want to walk on stage and everyone be like, dude, he's roided up <laughs> this thing. I'm scared of the guy now. <laughs> so I, just wa- I just wanted to hear some dick jokes. I didn't want to get fucking terrified. So uh, I'm trying to weigh at least 80 kilos before I step on stage. I have two months to get there. Um, and here's my proposal to you guys. I am now going to be doing a weekly weigh-in challenge on the Spearhead Sunday's Facebook group. Okay, so if you're not in the group, please do join it now because this is going to be—I <laughs> don't know what it's going to be. It, it could be hilarious. It could be—it could be cyberbullying. Could be body shaming. It all depends on whether I can hold up my side of the bargain. So here's the deal: every week, I need to weigh more than the last week. I don't have to put on a kilo every week because I think that's a little bit ridiculous. If I, if I was putting on a kilo every week, two months... Oh, that's not that... Ri- uh, anyway, here's the deal. Every week on a Monday morning, I'm going to film myself stepping on the scales and I'm going to film the scales and whatever the weight is, it has to be more than the last Monday. So I weighed myself this Monday and I weighed 75 kilos. So... I'm going to be posting a video tomorrow, Monday morning. I haven't been weighing myself at all. I'm I'm recording this on Friday. I haven't weighed myself all week, but I have been going to gym and I have been eating. And uh, I need to weigh more than 75 kilos. If I don't, you you can all abuse me in the comments. Tell me to go to gym. Call me a skinny cunt. All of that. And I'm going to be doing that every single week until the special because I want to weigh at least 80 when I hit that stage, okay? So here's my workout regime at the moment. I'm going to gym <coughs> uh, three times a week for this month, and then the month beforehand, I'm going to be going five days a week. That is the plan, because I just, I don't know, I just want to fill out a t-shirt, and I feel like you guys uh, love bullying me, and love telling me that I'm a skinny cunt, so I thought I might as well involve you in the group. So if you want to join the group, just search Spearhead Sunday's podcast group on uh, Facebook and you'll find it. Just hit request to join, answer the questions and I will approve you, all right? So that's what it's gonna be. Oh, also I'm gonna be posting my um, my stats, like what I'm benching, what I'm deadlifting, if you're interested every week as well. The goal is also every week to hit a new max uh, because I do think that's possible. That's what I used to do when I was a personal trainer. So I'm gonna get right into it and knuckle down and put on some fucking weight, boys. All right, so that's that. Now, what else did I want to talk about this week? What did, what did I do this week? Oh, I want to... Um, I was thinking that I kind of want to revive my second channel a little, a little bit. Let me know what you guys think of this. I think I'm going to start the Lou vlog up again. Um, because, I don't know, I just haven't really been doing anything with my second channel. I've kind of been at a loss of what to do with it. And I know that you guys really enjoyed the Lou vlog when I was doing it a couple years back. But um, I just, my life just wasn't very exciting at that moment. I think I still had a job and I had a shitty phone that I was recording it with. Uh, now I have a better phone and uh, I'm, I might get a camera if there's enough interest in the vlogs as well um, for it. So I was thinking of starting out the, the weekly vlogs again. I think I'll do them weekly. I'm pretty sure I can do that. I'm not going to do daily vlogs. Um, as, as, as I feel, I feel like that would, that would be quite an interesting challenge to vlog every single day, but I don't know, man. I just don't want to film my life that much. I I think I could do daily vlogs if someone else was filming me, but I just don't want to be filming myself every single day and then editing it. You know what I mean? Too much work, I think. I could do it if someone else was filming, similar to how Philly D does his vlogs where it's someone else films it, then someone else edits it, and he's just, he's in it, and it's more just filming the office and all that kind of shit and what they're working on. That would be really interesting. I would love to do something like that, but at the moment, you know, I don't work in an office. I, I fucking, uh, I, I, I work in my tiny bedroom in my parents' place. So, you know, I don't know. It could, could go somewhere, but 
getting fucking away from the main thing, I was thinking of starting up a, uh, my vlog again. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. It's not going to be one of those cancerous fucking, hey guys, look, hit like and subscribe, dab on the haters, buy some merch vlogs. It's just going to be something that I think will be kind of cool, a little bit chill to watch. Um, kind of like Casey Neistat's vlogs maybe, but also, you know, not as good. <laughs> just filming what I do um, with my life because I think uh, it'll give a good insight to you know, how I'm working on the, uh, on the, on the special and that, um, and all of the stand up that I do behind the scenes that you guys just really don't see. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. And I might start it up, um, two weeks from now, because I guess I'll make the first one when I go to VidCon. A lot of people are asking me if I'm going to be going to VidCon. Yes, I am. Got my ticket. I'm going to be going. I'm going to be bringing a camera guy. We're going to be filming there. Uh, might do something for bi-monthly bull there, I'm not too sure, there's not really too much to make fun of at VidCon, um, that would, that would fit well with a political media satire series, but I don't know, we'll see, if I can think of something I might do, otherwise I'm just gonna vlog it, <coughs> um, and yeah, it'd be interesting to do, it's the first VidCon in Australia, yes, I will be there, um, as well as a whole bunch of other big names that I'm friends with that strangely are not on the lineup, like the featured creator lineup for VidCon. Like I look at the Australian VidCon lineup featured creators and I'm just looking through the names. Seriously have a look and I don't know who the fuck any of these people are. There's a few of them that, that, that are like really big YouTubers. Like there's Auntie Donna who are great. There's Neil Cole Hacker. He's quite big. He's good. Um, there's Rucka Rucka, those guys are fucking awesome, uh, Hey on B as well, she's great, uh, and also quite big, Sketch She are huge, but just about all of the other people, I don't know who the fuck they are. Like there's like I'm literally going through. I'm not dissing these people, by the way. It's not you know I don't I don't have anything against these people, but I'm just quite confused at. Not so much why they have booked these people, but why they haven't booked any of the, what I consider to be the true leaders in Australian YouTube. Like Max Mofo, not a featured creator. Uh, who else is not on it? Um, Frenchie, not on it. Alex Williamson, not on it. Elliot Loney, Luke Kidgel, not on it. And no offers. I'm not on it. Uh, I'm not the biggest, but you know, I'm certainly... A at least 10 times bigger than fucking most of the people on this lineup. Um, yeah, there's, there's heaps and heaps of people on the, the feature creators. Again, I'm not trying to diss them. I'm just really quite kind of confused and perplexed at VidCon Australia's choices. Like, they don't even really have any of the, the massive beauty vloggers from Australia. It's very confusing. Like, they've got a um, whole bunch of trans people and, and feminist vloggers and uh, gay people, which of course, you know, you should have to, for representation, but um, it seems like they were like, they, they were like, let's, let's knock out the social justice section of it. And then we'll just, I don't know, we'll pick people who've got 20,000 and, and they don't swear. <laughs> it's, you know what they've done? They've tried to do a VidCon full of um, PC YouTubers that don't say anything controversial. And I think they quickly realized that that doesn't exist. In, in Australia, like, like the big guys, very, very few of us are television friendly. You know what I mean? Like I'd say Auntie Donna might be one of the only truly big YouTubers that are making comedy videos that aren't saying cunt. <laughs> so I don't know. It's interesting. I will be going though. I'm just, um, kind of perplexed at, at their featured creators and, and who they chose and why they chose them. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. Interesting. Dude, you know what I did? Uh, this, this is probably a bit old now. I would have talked about it in the last podcast, but I didn't get around to it. You know what I fucking did? Uh, I saw... I highly recommend this, by the way. I saw the um, the McGregor-Mayweather fly, fight. Flight. Imagine if those two cunts were just flying around. It'd be, dude, it'd be like Dragon Ball Z. McGregor would still would have lost. But, you know, he'd be like Vegeta. <laughs> dude, that's the perfect analogy. McGregor versus Mayweather was just Goku versus Vegeta. Where Vegeta was like, I'm going to beat you, Kakarot. And then Goku was like, hey, I'm just enjoying my life. I own a strip club. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, I saw the Mayweather-McGregor fight. And uh, I saw it with Jazz, my girl, in uh, a cinema. I didn't know you could do this. I only found out because Luke Kidgel told me about it. That his dad was seeing it in a cinema with a bunch of friends. I had no idea that you could do this. But, um, yeah, I... Uh, it was fucking incredible, guys. Like, what they did 
was you pay 30 bucks. If you don't know, the pay-per-view to watch it, stream it on a fucking laptop or your TV is like $100. Um, this was $30, and you got to see it in a cinema packed full of fucking rabid fight fans. It was amazing. So we went in, and how it works is because these, these pay-per-view things go for like three hours, they just kept the doors open the whole time. You could come in, come out. They were selling popcorn, all this kind of shit. They were like, popcorn, popcorn. It was fucking mad. Um, so we were watching the, the few fights beforehand, going in and out, getting some food, coming back in, blah, blah. It was incredible. Everyone was cheering, yelling. Everyone was so into it. Um, anyway, we watched the, uh, the McGregor Mayweather fight, and um, it was so great. You know what it was? Every single person, except for about eight people, were really, myself included, really, really barracking and incredibly behind McGregor. Everyone was like, McGregor's gonna fucking win! Go McGregor! Fuck the Mayweathers! All that kind of shit. And then there were about eight people who were going for Mayweather, and I'm pretty sure they were the only actual boxing fans. <laughs> the only people who actually knew the sport of boxing. Everybody else was like, McGregor's funny during the press talk, that means he's a better boxer! Um, and we're just going for him. And to be honest, my, my, my thoughts going on it was, I wanted McGregor to win, but I knew he was going to lose. That's how I felt. Like, I just wanted him to win because I love the underdog kind of thing. But it felt like everybody around me actually believed that he was going to win and was surprised when he lost. It was funny. Like, um, awesome fight, by the way. I, w I, was, I was not expecting to enjoy it that much. It was hilarious because uh, McGregor came out and he did really well in the first five rounds. Like, he was really boxing... Mayweather, he kind of forced Mayweather to change his style from, you know, dodging stuff to kind of being more defensive. It was really, really great, but then he just got tired and Mayweather won the fight like he always does by wearing the other person down. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a very good fight and I was very surprised by McGregor's uh, boxing skills. Like I was, I was almost like, fuck, if he could get one really good punch in before round six, he could totally win, but he didn't get it, of, of course. Um... And, uh, and it was great. And yeah, anyway, he lost, of course, because he's just not a professional boxer. Dude, you can't go up against the best in the world with a year of training and actually fucking win. It's something you've never done before. Um, but anyway, the fight was awesome. What was really funny to me was uh, the whole crowd just l hating Mayweather and not even, not even considering the possibility that he could win. Like, no shit. When, when Mayweather came out, you know how he was wearing that balaclava? When they, when they revealed that he was wearing that, the entire cinema just laughed. They just laughed at him. It was like, what the fuck is this guy wearing? It was ridiculous. It was fucking stupid. Why would you walk out in a balaclava? Like, that's something that maybe a 20-year-old dude in his first professional fight could do. But, mate, you're 40. All right? You're not, you're not a rapper. You, you, you have no, you're, you're not a robber. You're not a criminal. You have not come any longer from poor, from a poor situation, right? You were a millionaire before this fight. You're going to be an even bigger millionaire after it. You can't walk on in a balaclava, mate. It's not you. It was just ridiculous. Um, and the whole theater just erupted into laughter thinking that he looked ridiculous. Um, but when McGregor started getting tired and started to lose the fight, it was hilarious how the energy in the theater just completely switched. Like, people started to not enjoy the fight because the one they wanted to win started to lose. I was like, yeah, I wanted McGregor to win, but fuck, now we're watching an awesome historic boxing match. This is still sick. I can see Mayweather use his incredible boxing skills. Like, why are you mad? Maybe they all put money on him. Imagine putting money on McGregor, you fucking idiots. You just look at the odds. And they're like, yeah, if you put uh, $100 on McGregor and uh, he wins by round six, we'll give you five grand. It's like, no, that means he's not going to win. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he lost. And then my favorite part about McGregor losing is all of the fucking stupid comments of, yeah, but if Floyd stepped into the MMA ring, he would lose. Like, yes, of course he would, because he's not an MMA fighter. And that's why he's not going to step into that ring, you fucking dopes. Dude, that's like, that's like saying, you're just proving your own fucking point. It's like, yeah, McGregor stepped into a boxing wing, ring and he lost because he's not a boxer. And if Floyd stepped into a UFC ring, he would lose because he doesn't fucking know MMA. 
That's the point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I thought it was a great fight, and uh, I, I would highly recommend if uh, if you ever get the chance again to see one of those um, pay per view fights in a cinema. Be- take a bunch of friends because there's nothing better than it's like one thing to sit in your lounge room and yell with like five of your friends. It's another thing to go with those five friends and yell with like two hundred people. It was fucking incredible, and um, not many people know that that was pos- possible. It was, it was funny, it was literally just, uh, like it had the, the Foxtel watermark in the corner. Like they literally just bought the Foxtel pay-per-view and then projected it onto a screen. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend it. It was really, really good. And uh, <clears throat> fucking well done to McGregor as well. For That was a very, um, put up a great fight for, for somebody. He did a lot better than I thought he would, to be honest. All right, um, now before we get into miscellaneous by the end, I just want to say a quick congratulations to my uh, good friend Cursor for releasing a track with Future and Young Buck from G-Unit. Future, all right, regardless of what you think of Future's music, he is currently one of the biggest rappers alive right now, all right? I'm going to talk to me about Tupac, all right? Right now, currently, one of the biggest, most popular, successful rappers alive. And a cunt from Australia, an independent musician from Australia, is on a track with one of the biggest rappers in the world. That is a fucking incredible achievement. And I want to give uh, a massive shout out to Cursor for pulling that off. It's fucking great. The song is really, really good. He's got an album out coming soon. And it's just great to see my friends killing it, man. Regardless of what you think of his music, regardless of what you think of Australian hip hop, regardless of what you think of future, that is a fucking historic moment in Australian history. Australian musical history, right? I'm pretty sure the politicians don't give a fuck about it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> You're not going to catch them talking about it in Parliament. Dude, did you hear Cursor say cunt on a track with Future? I'm pretty sure no rapper has ever done that before. That's got to be a world first, i got to say. But yeah, I just wanted to say uh, well done to Cursor. The track is awesome. It's, um... Ah, uh, I should know what it's called, fucking idiot. I was just been I've been listening to it on repeat all day. I can't remember a fucking thing. If you want to look it up, uh, it's called Total Concentration. Uh, featuring Cursor, Future, and Young Buck. Check it out. It's a great song, and um, I had the privilege of hearing it before it came out, and I kept it uh, a bit of a secret. And let me tell you something. I got I got to hear. This is the weird perk of being a stand up that I never thought would happen. I got to hear Future's voice unmixed. It was very interesting because he's always got that auto tune kind of vibey uh, effect on his voice, and it was very interesting. It sounded like he was um, uh, obviously rap singing kinda to make his voice sound very good with autotune so without it, it didn't it sounded weird not bad just strange but obviously that's i guess he's figured out i have to sound like this before it's mixed so that when it is mixed it sounds awesome so um yeah that's that's all i want to say just a, a massive congrats to my uh friend cursor fucking big moves and uh that he he truly is really at the forefront of australian hip hop like after doing this and starting up his own record label with Warner Music behind it. It's indisputable at this point. He's the fucking biggest cunt in Australian rap. And uh, if you think otherwise, I'm sorry. You are incorrect. (laughs) Um, Okay, so let's get into the uh, worst part of the podcast, unfortunately. We got... um, Oh, I ran a little long. I probably only have time for one question. Uh, If you don't know, the miscellaneous bit at the end is the part where I answer questions written by you, okay? So, um, this one... Uh, if you want to send in a question, I'm running a little bit low on them. If you have any uh, life advice that needs to be answered or you have a dilemma, you have a funny story, a revenge story, sometime that you did something horrible and you regret it, but hey, it's a funny story, um, let me know and uh, email it to podcast at loosespears.com. Summarize it in the subject line so I know what I'm going into before I click it. And uh, yeah, I will uh, answer it if I think that it's entertaining enough. All right. Um, Where are we? So I have a question here from a gentleman named Potato. And the subject line is, I like sex, but she is a Christian. Uh, I think I already know what my answer is. Uh, G'day Lou, you can call me whatever. Ah, oh, fuck. Hang on, I need to go back and edit out his name. One second. 
All right, I'm back. The, man, the wonders of technology. I can fucking censor myself from making my own mistakes. All right, I'm going to call this guy Alex now, right? His name is not Potato. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. Um, all right, so this guy's name is Alex. G'day, Lou. You can call me whatever. Keep me private, please. All righty, Alex. Recently, I have been talking to this chick, and I think it could go somewhere. I'm pretty sure we have, we both have feelings for each other, and it could probably lead to something serious. The only problem is, she's a Christian. I don't have anything against her being religious, but she's into the whole waiting for marriage before having sex thing, and I don't know if I could do that shit. Maybe I'm just being a cunt for thinking about it. What do you reckon? Keep up the good work, man. I'm glad to see you getting fucking successful. I can't wait until you sell the fuck out. Me and either bro <laughs> cheers can't have a shit one all right thank you alex um yeah look <clears throat> this is a hard one because man to be honest faith is a very very important thing to people it's a very important thing to people and i would say you if you, let's say right you convince her to fuck you she most likely is going to feel very, very guilty about it, and she's going to hold some resent to you because, from her point of view, nothing, no one, no single thing, experience, anything, is more important than God. Uh, and unfortunately, that includes your dick, mate. <laughs> your dick is not the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry. Um, and if, if she were to... Uh, forsake that belief for you, she's going to feel guilty about it and uh, she's going to end up resenting you for it. So I would I would let this one go, man, especially because you obviously sound like you're not religious. She would probably be much happier with somebody who is. You know what I mean? And I think that you would probably be much happier with somebody who is not uh, incredibly religious like that just because if, you know, if it's so important to her that she would not have sex with anyone before marriage, and it's so unimportant to you that you are considering violating her beliefs just to get your dick wet, that doesn't really sound like it's gonna, you know, make a conducive relationship. So I would I would let this one go, because at the end of the day, um, only she can make that decision. Um, to and, and by that, I mean, you could probably pressure her into it, but she's going to feel awful after it. Only she can make the decision to uh, change her beliefs or leave her religion or whatever it is to get her mind around it to fuck somebody without feeling guilty about it. So if, if, if at the end of the day, if you are the person that convinces her to fuck you, she's going to end up resenting you. And I think that would fuck any potential relationship. She has to be the one to decide that. So I would just say, I would just be honest, man. I would say... Uh, I'll be honest with her because um, being honest with her and saying, look, I really like you, but I am not about that life. I don't, I cannot wait for marriage. I'm sorry. I hope that you can find somebody who does, but that is just not me. And I don't want to waste your time or make you believe that uh, something else. Cause she's probably thinking the, the opposite thing. You know, I really like this guy, but he wants to have sex before marriage. I wonder if I can convince him to walk the path of Jesus. Like, do you know what I mean? Like put yourself in her shoes. If she pressured you into following the life of Jesus, just so you can get a root at the end of it, when you're married, you would probably end up resenting her. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's the same kind of thing. So I would just be honest with her and say, I, I know this is really important to you and it's obviously more important than me. I don't want to take it away from you, but it's just not for me. So I think we should see other people. Um, I hope you find somebody who's into that. And what will come of that is, uh, one, you won't have to try so hard to get a root. You'll probably find somebody who's much more aligned to your belief system. Or two, You'll walk away. Make sure you walk away, by the way. Don't say that and then kind of come back into her life and lead her along on a string. Otherwise, you know, it won't work. It'll just make both of you sad and horny. <laughs> um, she, uh, the two, if you walk away after saying that really politely and really reasonably, she might go, you know what? I actually would like some bomb dick. <laughs> I actually would like a bit of that uh, bit of that D there, mate. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to leave Jesus and, and jump on Alex. Um, and she has to come to that decision on her own. So don't don't presume that you are more important than someone's faith because it's a very important thing to those people. And uh, yeah, 
I, 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 I would just leave it. It seems, it seems too much work. And if you did manage to convince her, it would probably just backfire and end up with a, with a really guilty, resentful girlfriend, which is something that you just don't want. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, you'd have the kind of relationship where the husband accidentally killed their child. Like, she'd be like, I know you didn't do it on purpose, but I still hate you, and I can't get over it. <laughs> so, I would, I would move on, man. Um, that's my advice to you. So, uh, yeah, we only got one t- time for one uh, thing. Sorry, I've, I got a little bit fucking too into that rant about the shoes. So, uh, yeah, to recap, if you have any uh, Nike MX90 Ultra BR Racer Blues in size 13, or you know a friend who does, hit me up. I'm paying money. I really want these shoes for the special. It's very important to me. Um, uh, and also, New Zealand Tour is coming up. I'm going to be announcing it next week. Uh, if you want to get access to the pre-sale, put your uh, country and your city into loosebeers.com slash gig list. Actually, do that no matter where you are from, because I don't spam people. You Like, if you live in America and you put in America, you're not going to get an email about New Zealand. I segment it like that. So I really don't spam people. And the gig list is how I choose which, which cities and which countries I go to. So if you really want me to come to fucking Sweden, if you can find a thousand people from Sweden to put it on the mailing list, I'll fucking go there because I'll be like, cool, I'm not going to lose money when I do that. That's a good uh, decision for me because as much as I want to go everywhere, I also don't want to be homeless. <laughs> so the gig list is mainly how I choose to tour. So if you want me in your city, you know, make it happen. Put your fucking thing in there and I'm not going to spam you with it because I hate that shit, you know? I think I think uh, I sent out an email about the crowdfund and the email before that was literally six months ago. But so, you know... You might get an email once every six months if you're lucky. And I try to make them funny too. All right, that's all I wanted to talk about, guys. Thank you very much. Um, Join the podcast group as well if you want to see the weigh-in, which will be happening on Monday. And I need to weigh more than 75 kilos. Otherwise, I'm a pussy and you have to body shame me. All right, I'll talk to you soon, cunts. Have a shit one.